embryo models only these models will be kept for your examination so you will need to study only this and come prepared for your examination uh, for the practical okay on saturday we will be keeping all the specimens slides embryo models everything x rays all everything for your revision in dissection hall so you can come down you can see all the slides you can uh, revise all the specimen and then go okay whatever we are going to display for the exam the same specimens will be kept there on uh, saturday okay so let's see what are the embryo models which will be kept for your examination and there is a model of sperm okay so how are we looking at it we are removing the outer coat okay this is the cell membrane cell membrane we have removed it off and we are seeing the inner structures okay where is the cell membrane this outer covering is a cell membrane okay and portion of it we have removed to see the inner structures now in this what what questions can come we can ask that what are the names of these parts okay this is the head this is the neck this is the middle piece and tail is not seen in this model okay now head head contains two parts the one which is covering the head this is the acrosomal cap number 1 is the acrosomal cap this is two two is the nucleus of the sperm so the nucleus is forming the head and acrosomal cap is forming what it is forming the it is formed by golgi apparatus golgi apparatus forms a covering which is called as the acrosomal cap okay we have you will be asked about spermatogenesis and spermiogenesis you will study spermatogenesis and spermiogenesis for this model okay they will ask you what are these parts how are they derived and what is the action of this parts okay this is the neck neck contains the microfilaments and inside the microfilaments actually these microfilaments are arising from centrioles neck is the constricted portion we have proximal centriole here which cannot be located in this particular model but you will have to study that on your own and from the proximal centriole we get this microfilaments 9 into 2 pattern that means two two microfilaments are ar arranged around in a circle in nine pairs okay 9 into 2 pattern this are axial filaments micro um, microfilaments which run till the tail and all the mitochondria in the spermatozoa that is the spermatid from the spermatid all mitochondria encircle around the axial filaments to form the mitochondrial sheath so this is a mitochondrial sheath once the mitochondria completes of that then there will be only axial filaments left okay axial filaments will form the will form the tail piece or principal piece okay tail piece is also called as principal piece so what are the parts head neck middle piece and the tail piece okay in the head what you will see you will see head is covered by the acrosomal cap now how everything is formed acrosomal cap is formed from the golgi apparatus of spermatid head is formed by the nucleus of the spermatid middle piece is starting from the neck region this is the neck region which contains proximal centriole then the middle piece which contains mitochondrial sheath around the axial filaments okay now what is their function acrosomal cap releases lot of hyaluronic acids and enzymes hydrolytic enzymes which will break the barriers of the oocyte okay there are three barriers of the oocyte right here fertilization can also be asked in this question okay what are the barriers of 
oocyte, where the sperm is crossing. That can be asked. Okay, we have three barriers from outside to inside. We have corona radiata, we have zona pellucida, and cytoplasmic membrane of the oocyte. Okay, so acrosomal cap releases hormones, enzymes, which will enzymes which will break the corona radiata. Okay, and then go and fix to the zona pellucida receptors. Okay. So now let us go to the next part that is the nucleus. Nucleus forms the male pronucleus after entering into the oocyte during fertilization and fuses with the female pronucleus to form the zygote. Okay, so this is the main important part. Now this one, uh, neck. Neck contains proximal centriole. From the proximal centriole to distal centriole, which is at the end of the middle piece, will secrete or will produce this axial filaments. All these axial filaments which provides the shape to the middle piece and the tail piece. Okay, that is produced by the centrioles. Now, mitochondrial sheath provides the energy for the sperm to move towards the oocyte during fertilization process. Okay, so after that, the tail is important for the movement of the sperm towards the oocyte, okay, from its uh, origin, okay. So, these are the various parts and functions. Now, next model is the structure of human ovum, okay. In this, what are the structures you can see? This is structure of human ovum or we can also say that this is the secondary oocyte, secondary oocyte. Now, is this before fertilization or after fertilization? This is before fertilization, okay? Before fertilization. Before fertilization, you see this. Now, what does it contain? It contains the three barriers. What are the three barriers? First is the corona radiator cells. All these cells are the corona radiator cells. Then we have this layer that is the zona pellucida. This number two is marked here. That is zona pellucida. And the last one, the layer which covers the oocyte, that is the cytoplasmic membrane. Okay, cytoplasmic membrane. Now, these are the three layers. Now, next, inside the oocyte, this yellow color area, that is the ooplasm, okay, or cytoplasm of the oocyte. Now, in that, what we will see? We will see centrioles. We will see nucleus. Okay. This is going to be female pronucleus after fertilization happens. Okay. So, this is the nucleus. In which state it is in? This is in the metaphase state. Okay. Of second meiotic division. Till the, uh, sorry, prophase stage. Okay. Till the uh, fertilization the oocyte, secondary oocyte remains in the prophase, end of the prophase stage and it will not enter into the metaphase stage of second meiotic division. Second meiotic division will complete only if the fertilization completes, okay? That is only if the sperm enters into the three barriers, crosses the three barriers, immediately there will be second meiotic division happening inside the female uh, into the oocyte and then thereby releasing the female pronucleus. Okay. So that is the area which you are uh, understanding in this. Uh, uh, what, what questions can be asked? Questions can be asked related to fertilization process. Questions can be asked uh, uh, about uh, uh, oogenesis. Okay. Oogenesis and ovarian cycle can be also asked here. Okay. So, please read all these three related to this particular model. Once again, we'll revise what, what structures you can see. This is a corona radiata, zona pellucida, this is a cytoplasmic membrane, and this is the ooplasm, ooplasm or cytoplasm of the, or simply yolk. We call it as yolk, okay? And it contains the centriole and the nucleus present here and arrested at the end of prophase state of second meiotic division, okay? Just this is 
before ovulation or after ovulation this is after ovulation and before fertilization please remember that okay that is the first thing you have to keep in mind now coming to the next that is the menstrual cycle model this is a model showing menstrual cycle in this what are the questions first question you will have to remember is what are the layers what you can see this what you can see is a small piece of uterus okay from inside this is the uterine cavity to outside okay what are the layers of uterus endometrium myometrium what you can see at the base is the myometrium myometrium is more thicker compared to endometrium but what we want we want only changes in the endometrium so we are taking only endometrium your myometrium is shown less and final layer is perimetrium after uh, myometrium we will get perimetrium okay there are three layers to the uterus what are the three layers from inside to outside endometrium myometrium perimetrium okay perimetrium cannot be seen here now what are the layers of endometrium only endometrium what are the layers this will be the next question what are the layers from inside to outside stratum compactum this outermost covering sorry innermost covering inside the cavity what you can see this innermost covering is called as stratum stratum means layer stratum compactum because it is compactly packed then we have spongiosum stratum spongiosum all this area is a stratum spongiosum okay this is a stratum spongiosum and the most basal layer containing base of the uterine glands that is called as stratum basale okay three layers in the endometrium that is stratum compactum stratum spongiosum stratum basale okay three layers now what are the functional layers stratum functional only two layers are called as stratum functional excuse me one second please yeah uh see this one so what is the first question what are the layers of uterus three layers from inside to outside endometrium myometrium and perimetrium what are the layers of only endometrium from inside to outside stratum compactum stratum spongiosum stratum basale okay now what are the contents of endometrium what does endometrium contain what we can see here what we can see is uterine blood vessels you can see the uterine blood vessels we have arterial and venous blood vessels okay you can see that as we are getting closer to the menstruation the blood vessels arteries are more coiled these are called as spiral arteries these are called as spiral arteries as it is going towards the menstruation the spiraling becomes more and more coiled okay so these are the blood vessels other than that we have got lot of spongiosum cells okay loosely packed spongiosum cells present inside or these are also called as decidual cells okay decidual cells we will say only after fertilization but before fertilization we simply call it as spongiosum cells large rounded cells which are loosely packed inside the stratum spongiosum then we have endometrial glands these are endometrial glands endometrial glands has got see it's a continuation of the epithelium itself simple columnar epithelium 
it continues as endometrial glands now see here what happens is the endometrial glands base is very important layer why because stratum functional stratum functional has got two layers which two layers stratum compactum and stratum spongiosum these two layers are called as stratum functional stratum basal does not get shedded off during menstruation okay stratum basal contains only basal portions of endometrial glands okay from here only we have stem cells present at the base of endometrial glands which will give first to the stratum compactum then gives off all the cells which are required for formation of spongiosum okay during proliferation so this is the proliferative period okay so that is the importance of three layers okay what are the three layers stratum compactum stratum spongiosum stratum basal what is functional layer two layers first two layers that is stratum compactum and stratum spongiosum together are called as stratum functional why we call it as stratum functional because this these two layers are functional layers these two layers are shedded off during menstruation okay otherwise the stratum basal contain only basal portion of the endometrial glands and that will not be shedded off during menstruation and during proliferation again you have to get back the endometrium so that is all coming from where coming from the base of endometrial glands okay so the, these are the uh, important questions after that what are the stages of menstrual cycle what are the stages of menstrual cycle we have got first we always start with menstrual stage okay day 1 it usually takes 228 to 30 days in a uh, female to female it might change and average is 28 days of cycle in 28 days of cycle first day of menstruation is calculated of first day of menstrual cycle okay so that after that after menstruation it carries from 4 to 6 days after that next stage is the proliferative stage in proliferative stage what happens is whatever is shedded off everything is regained back okay you get spongiosum you get compactum you get all the cells which is required this happens till 14th day of 14th day of uh, menstrual cycle on 14th day what happens is there will be ovulation period after that ovulation the endometrium is getting ready for fertilized egg so what it requires it requires lot of secretions so this phase the third phase is called as secretory phase in this secretory phase the thickness of endometrium completely increases endometrial glands enlarges and they keep on secreting lot of endometrial fluids to accommodate the fertilized egg okay so this continues for the next few days till 22 to 24 days okay 24 days of menstrual cycle okay so after that also if fertilization is not happening what happens is there is no corpus luteum corpus luteum in the ovary regresses when corpus luteum in the ovary regresses what happens there is no progesterone hormone to maintain the thickness so or to maintain the blood vessel consistency so what happens the blood vessels start making lot of loops circles and then they are broken when they are broken off what happens blood start accumulating in the endometrial layer and this tissue is necrosed because there is no blood supply right when there is no blood supply the necrosed tissue started shedding off during menstruation okay so this is a pre menstrual phase shortly before menstruation okay some people might have 3 to 4 days of pre menstrual phase so what are the phases pre menstrual phase menstrual phase proliferative phase secretory phase okay these are the four phases of menstrual cycle okay i hope all of you are clear with this any questions till here are you able to hear yes ma'am okay 
Next is fertilization finished. After fertilization, what we are looking? We are looking at zygote formation. Single cell stage is there. Okay, immediately after fertilization, single cell stage, that is fusion of male and female pronuclei, they fuse together to form zygote. And within short period, the zygote initiates a cleavage division. Okay, cleavage division starts. When a cleavage division starts, single cell divides into one large cell and one small cell. So later on again, those divides into the larger cell divides again into four cell stage, then six cell stage, eight cell stage. Eight cell stage to 16 cell stage is called as early morula. Okay, this stage is a early morula. So we see 16 till 16 cell stage is early morula. After that, morula increases in size and becomes around late morula. <coughs> Sorry, late morula. Late morula contains around 108 cells in it. Okay, 108 cells in it. So after that, what happens slowly? This is called as blasto, blastocyst formation or blastulation, okay? Morula and cleavage stage, we have seen that, okay? This, this stage you have seen, cleavage division. After that, what happens? We will see that inside the morula, small space start accumulating and separates the cells, okay, into two different layers. See here, there is a big cell. So what are we doing? This particular spear, we are cutting it, okay, and we are looking inside, okay? This is, we are looking inside the spear, okay? This is a cavity, which now separated the all cells into two different layers. Some cells which are located at one corner of the, this, is called as now this particular structure is called as blastocyst now what questions can be asked in this questions like what which which is the time of blastocyst formation around six to five to six days is the blastocyst formation okay post fertilization now what are the parts of blastocyst parts of the blastocyst till zona pellucida must be outside okay we are, show, we are not showing zona pellucida, but blastocyst contains zona pellucida. Okay, zona pellucida, then this covering is called as trophoblast. Okay, this is the trophoblast. And this is the inner embryoblast. We have trophoblast and embryoblast. Embryoblast contains cells which are now going to form the embryonic tissue. And this one, the one which is outside trophoblast, forms the peri-embryonic tissues like placenta and umbilical cord, okay? So all these are the two parts. Now, what is the fate of blastocyst? Fate is implantation. That is, this stage onwards, it is going for implantation, okay? Now, the zona pellucida, zona pellucida hatches, releasing the blastocyst into uterine cavity and the implantation process takes place. Now, we don't have implantation the model here, but questions can be asked on implantation. What is the regular site of implantation? Normal site of implantation is posterior wall of fundus of uterus. Okay, that is a normal site of implantation. Along with this, they will ask questions like, what are the abnormal sites of implantation? So, you have that question. Please do read abnormal sites of implantation. Okay, and if implanted at abnormal site, what can go wrong? Okay, so all that you will have to study. Now, this is the second week of development. In second week of development, we have two cavities formation. Okay, see here, that is the, this also we can say that this is the time where definitive yolk sac is formed. Okay, definitive yolk sac formation. Second week of development and definitive yolk sac formation. What, what structures you will see? You will see that this is the trophoblast. This is the embryoblast. Within embryoblast, slowly a cavity is formed. This is called as amniotic cavity. The bluish color one is the amniotic cavity. Okay. Now, from the lower region, we have another structure forming. 
this is called as primary yolk sac first a hugeness membrane will come this is called as hugeness membrane which cl closes these two layers okay so initially we have two cavities what are the two cavities uh, this is the amniotic cavity this is the primary yolk sac okay two layers what are the two layers epiblast layer the blue color one and the yellow color layer here is the hypoblast hypo means below hypoblast now between the trophoblast okay so here is a trophoblast and the hugeness membrane a new layer starts developing you can see this here a new layer starts developing and all cells are called as extra embryonic mesoderm what is it called as extra embryonic outside the embryo we will see this so that's why it is called as extra embryonic mesoderm in extra embryonic mesoderm slowly a cavity develops okay that is called as extra embryonic coelom okay extra embryonic coelom that splits the extra embryonic cavity into two layers what are the two layers this is the one which towards the yolk sac this is called as splanchnopleuric splanchnopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm the one which is outermost is there this whole layer this is called as somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm okay so two layers what are the two layers outer one is somatic second is planchno means visceral so this is parietal and this is visceral so somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm splanchnopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm okay this cavity is called as extra embryonic coelom now the yolk sac is reduced in size and now this is called as definitive yolk sac definitive yolk sac so now we have two cavities by the end of second week we have two cavities that is primary yolk sac sorry uh, amniotic cavity and a definitive yolk sac or secondary yolk sac two layers epiblast and hypoblast and two extra embryonic mesoderms that is somatopleuric and splanchnopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm okay so these are the points you have to remember in this model now this model shows placenta placenta has got two layers two surfaces okay the other side is this one and this is uh, one side so one side you will see smooth surface this is a smooth surface smooth surface side is called as fetal surface and rough side is called as maternal surface okay rough side is a maternal surface this is the maternal surface now understand metal maternal surface first in maternal surface this is all from the uterus okay we have pulled the placenta from the uterus so from the uterus you will see that there are why it is rough because you can see lot of elevations here these elevations are called as cotyledons okay these are called as cotyledons around 18 to 20 cotyledons are there which contains what are cotyledons cotyledons contains chorionic villi okay here questions like what is primary chorionic villus? What is secondary? What is tertiary chorionic villi? Can be asked to you. Okay. So that you will have to study and come. So these are the maternal surface. Now this margin, this, this side is a smooth surface. Smooth surface contains, this is a fetal surface, which contains these layers. What you can see is the fetal membranes. Okay. These layers, the cut portions are the fetal membranes. How are we looking at it? Here is the embryo, umbilical cord. We removed off embryo. We opened the sac. Okay. The fetal membranes are opened up and amniotic fluid from here is gone. Okay. So these are the two fetal membranes. What are the two fetal membranes? Amnion and chorion. Okay. Four and five are given. Amnion and chorion are the fetal membranes. Okay. Now on the fetal surface, what we can see? We can see ramifying blood vessels. These blood vessels are coming from the umbilical cord itself. From the umbilical cord, what are the contents? There are three structures inside the umbilical cord. Okay. Umbilical vein, one umbilical vein and two umbilical arteries. Remember that two arteries, one vein. Okay. Which vein is present? 
only left umbilical vein is left keep that in mind okay left umbilical vein is left that means it is present the right umbilical vein disappears so left umbilical vein and two umbilical arteries are present inside the umbilical cord okay here questions like umbilical artery carries what it carries deoxygenated blood from the fetus to the placenta okay uh then umbilical vein carries what it carries oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus okay this is opposite artery carries deoxygenated blood vein carries oxygenated blood okay so these are the contents which you will study in the placenta now next coming to this this is a picture this is a model showing pharyngeal arches okay pharyngeal arches you are looking at from outer view okay so here what you can see these are how many arches total six arches fifth arch disappears fifth arch disappears in this what you are looking at you are looking at the floor of the oral cavity okay floor of the oral sorry not floor of the oral cavity you are looking at the neck portion so pharyngeal arches are like this okay the ones which you can see outside these are called as pharyngeal clefts from inside if you go inside and see you will see pouches okay you will see from inside onwards at the same region you will have pouches clefts from outside pouches from inside okay you can see the pouch here from inside so there are four clefts and pouches from inside okay here what questions can be asked derivatives of the clefts and pouches okay i am not going into details you will have to study the clefts and pouches here okay and also we can ask development of thyroid here you can see an extensions from the floor of the oral cavity the thyroid development this is the thyroglossal duct now developing and coming downwards okay so in this model we can ask you thyroid development we can ask you pharyngeal clefts and pouches and arches okay what are the contents of arch each arch contain one artery one vein or oh, sorry uh, one artery muscle element uh, cartilaginous element okay and a nerve entering into it please go back and uh, read this pharyngeal arches what are the components okay next question can be what are the derivatives of clefts and pouches next question can be thyroid development okay from this model next comes this model this is a model showing the cleft lip and cleft palate okay so here what what questions can be asked how the cleft lip is, here in this model you can see unilateral cleft lip okay and here bilateral cleft lip okay and this is the cleft palate what you can see is posterior cleft palate anterior palate is normal so here in this models we can ask the development of lip and the nose and palate okay so i i am not going into developments because we have already studied in the uh, theory lecture so go back give one reading development of nose development of face face also can be asked here development of face nose lip upper lip and palate okay so if medial nasal process and lateral nasal process both jo doesn't join together along with the fronto nasal process here then we will see a unilateral cleft lip okay a fronto nasal process is not joining with the maxillary process on both sides then we will see bilateral cleft lip okay so if the um, palate is formed from three parts okay that is fronto nasal process forms the primitive palate here this is a primitive palate and uh, uh, both are maxillary processes palatal process of maxillary process if these two palatal processes does not fuse either from the front or from the back you will see that there is a cleft in the palate as well so you will have to read cleft palate formation okay so clear with this now in this model we will see development of the tongue here you are looking at the floor